as Utah season draws near, security agencies warn criminals in FCT to stay clear of Abuja or face the wrath of law. Wife of Oyo State Governor Lufunke Makinde challenges well to do in the society to give back to humanity. Good evening and welcome to NTA Yebo, the news at seven. My name is Anthony Gandono, the news in details. We begin with security matters, where security agencies in the Federal Capital Territory Abuja warned criminal elements with intent to disturb the peace of the territory this Easter and beyond to change their force and be ready or be ready to face the wrath of the action. This warning, this warning are contained in operational order on security operations for this festivity. Correspondent Olotu Yakubu reports. During festivities such as the Easter celebration that is to be observed in matter of days, places of worship such as this church behind me, recreational facilities and parks and gardens are usually of sentimental interest to operatives and management of security agencies. The reason behind this is not far-fetched. The target is to ensure that patronage of such facilities do not come under any threat from men of the underworld with sinister motives to disrupt plans and activities of law-abiding citizens in the territory. However, beyond all of these operational strategic initiatives, residents' expectations transcend just heightened tempo of presence for the Easter festivities. Community should be protected and then everywhere should be secured because criminal nowadays they roam about to see that they do one or two things. Already our EODs are going on to sweep all these uh, uh, recreation centers and all these uh, places of uh, worship and all that. So everything is set. Our men are everywhere. We do our routine patrol day and night, and you know we pin down in relevant black spots, and we're doing what we should do. The security agencies emphasized that the subsistence ban on certain activities that are inimical to general security will be fully enforced. Onotu Yakubo, NCA News. Now to Ogun State. Ogun State Governor Dafo Abiodu is urging Nigerians to intensify prayers for the country, imbibe the spirit of forgiveness, and keep hope alive for better days ahead. The governor stated this while breaking the Ramadan fast with the League of Imams and our first Ogun State chapter. Hakim Jimo reports. Governor Dako Abiodun at the Iftar with the League of Imams and Nafas in the state appreciates them for their efforts in reshaping the minds of young people from all forms of social vices, promising to build a befitting secretariat for the religious association in Nogun State. The governor urged Nigerians to keep the hope of a better day ahead alive and have strong confidence in the ability of President Bola Ahmed Tunubu's administration to turn around the fortunes of the country for the better. That same God will answer all our prayers. He will forgive all our trespasses. He will give us the grace to be like him in our behavior, in our disposition, in our conduct, in our utterance. The governor promised not to relent in improving the welfare and well-being of residents of the state through the various intervention programs in all sectors of the state's economy. He also assured that his administration will soon begin the sale of rice at 50% discount to residents beginning with the civil servants while the vulnerable groups will continue to get the commodity free of charge, noting that a committee has been set up for that purpose. The purchasing power that they seem to have lost because of inflation, we are putting them back in that position. And we want to be able to sustain this. Responding, Secretary of the League of Imams and Afas in Nogun State, Hajudin Adeumi, while commending the governor for his various efforts, 
programs and policies promised the association's unwavering support for the success of its administration in Ogun State. Special prayer was offered for the unity, peace, and progress of Ogun State, federal government, and Nigeria at large. In Abelkuta, Akim Jimo, NTA News. We now move from Ogun State to Oyo State. Members of the society have been urged to give back to humanity by encouraging, by assisting the vulnerable and less privileged. This was at an outreach by the wife of Oyo State Governor Ulufunke Makinde to children with special needs and the vulnerable in Oyo State in commemoration of the Easter. Grace Ayandike has the report. To improve the quality of life of vulnerable children, the disabled and others who are less privileged within Oyo State, wife of Oyo State Governor Tamuno Minene Makinde stretched out an arm of love to various homes for orphans and kids with special needs across the state. Representing the wife of the governor, Chairperson Oyo State House of Assembly Community on Women Affairs, said the gesture is important to foster a sense of community and compassion for those who receive the help. Giving them hope to smile, hope for their future. She is really touching lives. And we are really proud of our excellency. In the same vein, Customs Officers Wise Association, or your Ocean Command, has also extended a hand of charity to school for handicapped children and home for abandoned and rescued children, as well as juvenile correctional institution in Ibado. They encourage the homes to judiciously use the items provided in Ibado. Grace. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SGF, George Akume, has again re-emphasized the commitment by President Bola Tinumbu's administration to cushion the effects of foil subsidy removal as the federal government continues to roll out palliative programs and activities in every sector of the Yoruba community in the, in the 19 northern states of the country, explaining efforts by the federal government towards poverty alleviation in the country, the SGF says President Bola Tinumbu means well for the country. He urged Nigerians to be patient and support his administration as the sacrifice by Nigerians at this period of time is temporary and will yield the desired economic improvement. The SGF also acknowledged the contributions of Yoruba community in the northern states in uniting, this, uniting and strengthening the harmonious relationship among tribes in the country. The leader of the delegation, Chairman Council of Yoruba Traditional Obas and Chiefs in, not, in 19 northern states and FCT, His Royal Highness Mohamed Aribabuwo, described SGF's appointments as a renewed sense of hope and a promising future for the nation. Also applauded his commitment to service and his vision for progressives to actualize the President Bola Tinumbu's mandate. Motivation and reorganization and recognition of unleashing support to the success story of an organization drives delivery of quality performance and customer satisfaction necessary to boosting the morale of employers. This played out at the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations National Spokesperson's 2024 award ceremony, where 20 individuals and organizations were honored for outstanding performance. How many? Germany reports. The National Spokespersons Award, a platform to celebrate and acknowledge outstanding spokespersons in corporate communications, public affairs, politics, media, advocacy, and other domains in Nigeria. It's important for us to recognize those that we will begin to look at as icons, as templates, as those who we show the way, mentor the other people that are coming behind. It was a night of glitz and glamour with 200 entries but 10% scaled through to be honoured 
at the fourth edition of the annual event. I feel very great on behalf of the Chief Corporate Communications Officer because it's been a very assiduous task to change the perception of NNPC to our nation, to our people. We've taken the brand to a higher level. I'm always a step ahead of uh, whatever the situation is and that is also what is complementing the efforts of the uh, robust synergy you know in the National Assembly. I attribute this to the leadership and guidance of my boss the Chief of Defense Staff General C.G. Musa who is very very passionate about moving the armed forces you know forward. We're going to work harder to make sure that um, uh, the business of public relations we are practicing in Nigeria Customs Service is ethical and is to a standard that um, people will learn from us. Categories include distinguished spokespersons in technology, crisis management, political communication, judiciary, among others. The presence of a 105-year-old pioneer member of the institute added color and dignity to the event. The award is expected to promote efficiency and spur spokespersons to remain committed to advancing the cause of public relations in the country. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. Now to politics. The leadership of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is concerned about the need to reposition the party and begin early preparations ahead of the 2027 general elections. The party's National Working Committee has met with state chairmen of the party in this direction at the PDP National Secretariat in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf reports. It was a closed-door meeting that later opened to convey resolutions to the media. The party's acting national chairman, Ambassador Umar Damagum, disclosed that the interactive meeting was called towards finding strategic solutions to party's challenges. National Organizing Secretary Umar Bature emphasized the need to review the party's leadership positions at world, local government and state levels nationwide and also deal with issues of members involving in anti-party activities. Our letter of agitation for coming from party members suspended, suspended. But you are the one who are in charge of those things. So you tell us who did anti-party, who did you anti-party? Who did this, who did that, did that? Based on those reports, you are a member of NEP, decisions can be taken. The party is to soon review the tenor of 26 states working committee, beginning from the world, local government and state, following the expiration or soon to expire of their tenure of office. The resolution is that we should all go back and make sure that our respective state uh, chapters of the party are working. Meanwhile, the National Working Committee of the PDP has continued to engage with the Ondo state stakeholders towards the conduct of a hitch free governorship primary election. So we have contributed immensely to building this party. It is time for the party to, to look at us. The party promised to be neutral and fair to all concerned. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Still on politics, the 18 registered political parties under the umbrella of Interparty Inter Advisory Council of Nigeria, IPAC, now have an action plan to cover their doors and aspirations in the country. Timothy Yusuf reports that on view plan contains action to be taken to ensure further growth of the nation's democratization process. The report. Unveiling of the Interparty Advisory Council's four year action plan, supported by the Westminster Foundation for Democracy under the Nigeria Open Political Party Project. Chairman of IPAC, Yusuf Maman Dantale, said. The plan will have a spiral effect in the nation's democratic space. We will set this up going to the general elections, such as the second governors of elections and by elections. The man free, fair, credible, transparent, inclusive and useful elections in Edu and Ondosu Matural elections. Representative of the INEC Chairman, National Commissioner Professor Samu Lumeku, former President of the Senate and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Aim Pius Aim and House of Representatives Majority Leader Professor Julius Yombere were unanimous in their position that IPAC was wise to the challenge and address salient issues in the political party system. Much of the dangers we face during the election 
is rooted from the mistakes or the mischief that was done in the party primaries or in the party uh, machinery. The dark of doom consolidating and growing our democracy is the collective responsibility of all Nigerians. The Commission welcomes robust proposals on matters related to continuous improvement in the processes and procedures of election management and election in Nigeria. The country director of Westminster Foundation for Democracy, Adebowale Olorimola, believed that Nigeria cannot address money politics without the support of the political parties, promising continued support to political parties in the country to implement the plan. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. We will now go on a short break, and when we return, the news will continue. Stay tuned. Hello, my bro. Man, the rain is so heavy here. And there's so much traffic. I think we should go spawn, huh? Not a chance. Aye, sir. We don't quit, guys. I'll be there. Done. Two files received. I'm on my way. Take first right in 50 meters and you're there. Copy that. Hi, sir. Where are you? Guess where? Two minutes! Two minutes! Move! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Runway X. The future of fashion showcases. Very impressive. How did you pull that off? With Nigeria's top tech talents. And glow. Power your relentless ambition with ultra high speed data. Glow with pride. Hey, Zara. Come on. Come and help me. Then we can sell her now. We'll be able to break our boss in this evening. Ramon, take all this. This is what you have to do. You understand? This is what you have to do. Ramadan, what some ladan? Ramon, Oh, don't worry. Things don't matter. It can be wiped off with just one wash. Okay. Thank you. Zara! Hello, my bro. Man, the rain is so heavy here. And there's so much traffic. I think we should go spawn, huh? Not a chance. Aye, sir. We don't quit, guys. I'll be there. Done. Received. You are welcome back. Next is the sports update. Stay tuned. In an effort to celebrate International Women's Day and promote gender balancing, the Nigerian Olympic Committee Women's Commission organized work in Abuja with an inspire inclusion. The president of the Nigeria Olympic Committee. Habu Ahmed Gumel flagged up the work and emphasized the importance of women's inclusion, citing the success of the in Nigeria, especially the women, at the recent African Games. If it's one time, let's have the Nigerian Olympic Committee. We are doing our best to make sure that we have a lot of women in our school, in our board, and everywhere you think of. And that is the reason why this way is to bring awareness, not only to the people that are here, but to, to the whole nation, to know that women are important and they should be involved in the sporting activities. Look at this just concluded um, Africa, um, in Ghana. We see that the, the uh, award that they're giving to our uh, recognition that actually given to women in, in sports participation, um, technical, coaching and all that is inspiring lots of women. Week 11 results of the Nigeria Women's Football League saw several exciting matches played across eight centers. Rio Queen and Flex Queens played a goalish draw, while Adamawa Queens defeated Nigerian Rattles 2-0, Heartland Queens, Nasarawa Amazon, Bayelso Queens, FC Rubo, 
and Edo Queens all secured home wins. In tennis, Ekaterina Alexandrova continued her impressive form by defeating fifth seed Jessica Pergula in the Miami Open quarterfinals. This victory came after an upset win against world number one Iga Swiatek. Alexandrova, the 14th seed from Russia, will now face American Daniel Collins in the semifinals. Collins, a 23rd seed, kept her title hopes alive in her farewell season by defeating French player Caroline Garcia 6-3, 6-2 earlier in the day. With sports updates, Bright able to NTA News. So much for the news tonight. Join us tomorrow for another interesting package. From me, good night. Like on robot. My uncle no go bike. Uncle! What's up? Uncle, meet Andy. He has come to ask for my hand in marriage. Good morning and good afternoon, sir. What about good, good, good night? Are you seeing a movie? What nonsense? Son, you are in control. No, sir. It's my parents in the village. I'm doing a video call since they can't be here. Berekete, Jam Fanny Ogon, make a whip your fair, at the Aku Pui died, they were in the book, but Toba Fu's way right here. The market put a tweet out going with it to Jata. Berekete, it will be at Jata to Nick Monlep, you be a Janoku.